皆さんこんにちは、キメシチャンネルのオレッタです。もうやっと本格的な夏になってきましたね。It's hot!Last week I just finished another semester at school here in Japan and it was a big one because I am down to my last semester in school.The end is in sight! Which means, unlike before, no more textbooks, it's all just practical research. ただの勉強じゃなくて、より実践的なリサーチ、本格的な研究部分に入りました。The thing is, since I started grad school, I've posted a lot of videos on the topic. Vlogs about my actual school life, story times about what it's like from my point of view. But after reading the comments across all these videos, I realized I never actually talked about why I'm going to school in Japan. So today I want to lay all the cards on the table and tell you what it is that I'm actually doing at Japanese school and why I'm doing it. The first question I always get is what school am I going to? What am I actually studying? And Is it in English and Japanese? I currently go to a Japanese national university, the name of which I can't tell you quite yet, but I will tell you. I promise I will tell you soon, so just hold on a little bit longer. What I'm actually studying there is business. I'm getting a master's degree in business administration. It is completely 100% in Japanese. The thesis I'm writing, the research I'm doing, everything is in Japanese. It's a full on Japanese grad school experience. Which leads to the next question Why am I going to school in Japanese? Why didn't you just go to school in Japan in English? There are American universities in Japan and there are schools that teach courses in English. That is true. So let me be real honest with you. The first practical reason is because I'm on a scholarship. The scholarship I'm on is the MEXT scholarship from the Japanese government, which in most cases only sponsors you to go to Japanese national universities. Some of these do have English based programs like Keio University, etc. but You're not going to be able to go to a school like Temple, and even a school like Sophia University is very difficult to get into on the MEX scholarship. They want true blue Japanese colleges and they want foreign talent going into those schools. So that's just the nature of the program most of the time. I wanted to go to grad school back in the States, but the truth of the matter is I just couldn't justify the price. I'd applied to a program in Colombia, the Japanese pedagogy. I had looked into a Japanese studies program in NYU, and after applying to them and looking at them, I was basically like, these are just excuses to do something more Japanese, but the price tag on it just wasn't. Worth it? So I just never enrolled. When the MEX scholarship became an opportunity, I realized that this is something that allows me to go to school for free, but it also allows me to do a degree that is more relevant to my actual career. That leads me into my longer answer, which is basically universities have brand value. There are Ivy League schools in America that are cool just because they're Ivy Leagues, when they're equally amazing programs at other non Ivy League schools. Go William and Mary! There's this common narrative, especially for kids in the liberal arts, where you want to pick a school and you want to pick a degree based on what you're passionate about. From your point of view, you're thinking, I want to learn the thing that makes me passionate, that makes my gears turn. And that's amazing! That's great! However, the point of going to university is not to learn something. The point of going to university is to get a certification that precedes you into your career. I'm 100% behind people learning, setting their passion, but learning is a lifelong journey, and universities, more often than not, are a disguised price tag that are built to give you access to a certain social circle, to a certain job circle, to a certain career or degree path. I'm gonna go on a tangent here, but certain schools are brand names because the people in the field, they understand what it is that you probably know and what your personality is probably like before you even sit in an interview. That's why a certain degree is very powerful. This is something I struggled with when I picked my original undergraduate major because I love languages, I love culture, and I love people. It made the most sense to study the thing that I care about. So I got a degree in linguistics, and while you couldn't minor in it, I had enough credits to fulfill a minor in international studies and music. I graduated happy and smiley, and about six months later, the price tag of that same degree was no longer in deferment. My loans turned on, and it was now time to pay back for all those. Years I spent in school. And at the same time, I was trying to sell that degree to future employers. So, getting back to my original point, right about now, when you are watching this video, it should be about August 4th, which is a very big day for me because it is, in fact, 
my 30th birthday. <laughs> Coming to Japan at this point in my life has been a big turning point in my career. I've worked a good handful of strenuous jobs and I realized that this doesn't necessarily mean something to everyone. You can learn anything in life and you don't need to pay tens of thousands of dollars. This is something I've been thinking about recently, looking on why I picked my major here in Japan and why that's actually meaningful. In Japan, a liberal arts degree from the College of William Mary is simply a bachelor's degree, a certification to work and get a work visa. There's a lot of brand name schools around the world. There's Harvard, Oxford. In Japan, there's Tokyo University. But in my field in business, a master's in business administration that is not from Harvard pretty much means almost nothing. So getting a MBA from a Japanese university in an English program, not only is it the wrong country, but if you didn't even do it in Japanese, then it's like, that looks even more confusing. However, getting an MBA in Japan in Japanese prepares me to actually do business in Japan. So in a nutshell, the reason I'm getting my degree in Japan in Japanese is because A, I received a scholarship making it free. B, the reason I'm doing it in Japanese is because that prepares me to do business in Japan. I have a United States undergraduate and I'm working now on my Japanese masters, which combined together gives me access to jobs both in the United States, in Japan, and somewhere in between. The point is that in your individual case, in your individual career, no matter where it is that you're going, or even if you don't know where you're going, your resume is nothing more than a paid elevator pitch. The first thing that introduces you before you even walk into a room. You make sure that that resume says something about why you should be there before you even have a chance to get in there. That's it, I promise I'm done preaching. I just felt like I had to get that off my chest. So the next question is about the idea of lejarando. I don't know if you guys have heard this word or if it's still a thing anymore, but it's this idea that describes a very true sense of Japanese education in that you work really hard to get into schools, but once you're into university, you're good. Yeah, done. Supposedly, you just have to graduate at that point. And I got a lot of questions asking if that's the case also at my school. Obviously, my school is hard for me because it's in Japanese, but it's not. I feel like it's a lot easier to get good grades as long as you do certain things. Essentially, your grades are probably going to be okay as long as you don't skip class and you do the reading. So like in the States, I feel like you could get away with never doing any of the reading for university classes, but on your papers and your tests, if you don't have the exact correct information, you could still fail. You could put in all of your effort and still fail. In Japan, I was so worried because I knew that my best is still going to be way below a native Japanese speaker, and I was so worried that that would be an automatic fail for me, no matter how hard I tried. Like, your effort seems to be a lot more weighted than your actual content regurgitation. At least in grad school for me, I found that as long as you showed that you did the work, that you did the reading, that you at least tried to do it, and you did the minimum page requirements, and you did the thing and you showed up every day, that you will definitely pass and you'll probably do well. So it's difficult because you have to do all the work, but you don't have to be perfect. So I wanna get on to the last part, which is actually telling you what it is that I'm actually studying. So in English, the closest thing is probably a master's in business administration, an MBA. Because it is hakase kate zenki, it is the first half of a PhD. It's a lot more thesis heavy, a lot more writing heavy, and my thesis. I am full on into my thesis, so I figured I should probably explain what that is. So in the modern age, because of the internet, there's this common belief that you can connect with any person, any business, any country, that you can easily connect with anyone now because of the internet connections and things like that. In the business world, there is a theory from Harvard Business School, specifically from Pankaj Gamawat, there is a theory that this idea of the flat world, globalization, fratoka, globalka, that these concepts have created a bias. It's this idea that a lot of businesses, especially internet startups, etc., they set themselves up for failure because they assume they have this infinite market, they have access to any country, any customer, anywhere, simply because they put a website on the internet in multiple languages. The thing is that this is a bias. There are a lot of cases like, for example, Google when they tried to branch out into China. 
that did not go over so well because in China there is a lot of regulation on what can be on the internet and what can be shared between people. So coming from America, you think everybody uses Google, but in China they have their own in-house services like Baidu and things like that. The idea that Google and web searching would be easy in Russia. Just by the context of its language, the language, the Russian language is so complex that the way that the search terms and SEO works in English doesn't work the same way it does in Russian. It doesn't lend itself to that type of search. So it was very difficult for some of these big giant companies. It was a lot harder and it took a lot more money to actually try to get to these markets. So my thesis is looking at that theory of bias and what does it actually mean to be a business in the global age, specifically in the context of Japan. Japan right now has its own set of biases, specifically around the Olympics and specifically around the ideas of globalization. The, there's this infinite market of foreign people that they can market to if they just speak English. You know, with Rakuten and Englishization, there's this whole movement of speaking English and that if we can just be more English ready, we can have our hands in markets all across the world. And my thesis is that no, that's not necessarily the case. So my research is based on case studies and interviews with Japanese corporate managers asking, does their strategy actually make sense? Is their strategy biased? In addition to that narrative, I'm also matching it with essentially a market survey serving people around the world to ask what is it that they think about Japanese companies? How do they interact with companies in Japan who are trying to target them? What are the pain points? What is the disconnect between Japanese companies and the people who love Japanese stuff? So I'm really excited. Like right here, this tiny icy recorder is every precious interview that I've been doing with Japanese companies. And like, this is the most important thing. I feel like this is holding the golden treasure that I've built my life's work around. And like, oh my God. Yeah, so that's what I kind of launched this past few weeks and what I will be doing for the rest of this year before I hopefully graduate. The reason I bring this up also is because I want to invite any of you guys, if you're interested, you can actually help me out and participate. The survey is actually still going for about a few more weeks. It is open answer. It requires you to write as little or as much as you want to. All of the questions are open answer and they require as little or as much as you want to write. The survey is actually available in I believe eight different languages. So please pick the language that you are most comfortable with. If you've never been to Japan, that's fine. If you've ever liked anything Japanese, anything whatsoever, and you want to help me out with my research, I'll leave a link below. So that's basically it for today. We're kind of all over the board, but I'm at a huge turning point right now and I kind of wanted to share that with you. So if you have any questions, comments, ideas, etc., leave them in a comment below and I will see you there. Deva, kyou mo go shichou arigatou gozaimashita. I'll see you guys in my next video. Until then, stay cool, don't overheat, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye! Let's go.